Hello fellow classmates from our preaching class. I'm here today at St. Albans in Treasure Island, Florida, and we're pretending that we're having a, a come as you are service. In the name of God, whose power in us can do infinitely more than we can ask for or imagine. Amen. There's a storyline that I've seen in a number of TV shows and movies, and it goes like this. There's a child who's being raised by a single parent who's struggling alone to take on all the responsibilities and to make ends meet. And then out of the blue, the absentee parent rides on the scene full of exciting plans and grand promises. And the child is ecstatic of having mom or dad back in their life again. But before the dust can settle on this newly shaped family, something happens and the prodigal parent is out the door again, on the road, chasing another opportunity, looking for a new dream. Maybe I'm just a little oversensitive to this by being the son of a courageous single parent, but when I hear the story of Jesus' ascension, it tends to sound to me like that jaded Hollywood storyline. We've got the disciples who've been struggling to try to understand how their long-awaited Messiah could die such a humiliating death. And then they're elated to find that Jesus has risen and come back to them. But in a matter of a few weeks, Jesus is leaving again to rise to heavenly heights, leaving them alone once again. And so, I need to remind myself Luke was not a Hollywood screenwriter telling a tale of desertion. He was a gospel writer who was sharing a message of hope. So let's take a moment to investigate the meaning of ascension so we can recognize how this is good news, not just for Jesus, but for the disciples and for us today. The first meaning of ascension I'd like to consider is to literally rise up into the air like a hot air balloon rises into the sky. Luke's Gospel tells us that as Jesus was blessing the disciples, he withdrew from them and was carried up into the heavens. And in the book of Acts, Luke again writes, Jesus was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. This account tells us the disciples did not view this as desertion on Jesus' part, nor were they disappointed. On the contrary, it says that they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple blessing God. Physically, Jesus was lifted on high. Emotionally, the disciples' spirits were lifted to new heights. When he was young, Michael Duncan's mother took him to nursery school, and she was aware of his anxiety about being abandoned. So each day as she dropped him off, Michael's mother leaned down, kissed him, and said, Goodbye, my love. No one is leaving. Reassured by his words, Michael eventually adjusted to his new surroundings. Many years later, as a mature man, Michael faced the reality that he needed to place his mother in a nursing home. She was now elderly and frail with advanced Alzheimer's disease. She barely recognized her dear Michael. She often forgot to eat and could no longer care for herself. As he departed, leaving her in new and frightening surroundings, he remembered her words. He leaned down, kissed his mother, and said, Goodbye, my love. No one is leaving. His mother did recognize those words, even as she no longer recognized him. A tear appeared in her eyes. She clasped her hands and repeated, Goodbye, my love. No one is leaving. Jesus' message to his disciples upon his ascension was similar. His promise to send the Holy Spirit to guide and empower them for ministry was like saying, Goodbye, my love. 
no one is leaving. Like Michael Duncan and his mother, Jesus may have been out of the disciples' sight, but he was not abandoning them. The pastel candle that we've been burning for the past seven weeks, and the sanctuary lamp that glows continuously whenever there's reserved sacrament in the Omri, both remind us of Christ's continuous presence with us. Another meaning of ascension is to rise to a higher degree of power, like a person of modest origins who ascends to the office of President of the United States. Jesus was born in a humble stable. He grew up in an insignificant village. He wandered as a homeless itinerant preacher. He interacted with society's outcasts, and he was executed as a criminal. In a short time, Jesus' followers, like the faithful Ephesians, who Paul wrote about and we heard about this morning, came to see Jesus as the one whom God raised from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places to rule far above all with authority and power and dominion for all time. Bruce Kramer was the Dean of a School of Education at Saint, the University of St. Thomas in St. Paul, Minnesota, when he was diagnosed with ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. When faced with this debilitating diagnosis, Bruce made a conscious decision not to descend into self-pity or anger about the hand that he'd been dealt. Rather, he chose to ascend to higher ground by first forgiving his body. And then he enhanced his power as an educator by teaching in a whole new way. He openly spoke with journalists and organizations, and he wrote a book about his life with ALS, how he faced his approaching death with dignity, and about his concern for the needs of his wife and his other caregivers. There's a hiking trail that Beth and I love to walk that leads up to an outlook atop sleeping bear sand dunes with a beautiful view of Lake Michigan. This brings to mind another definition of ascension, which is to slope upward along an ascending path. This morning we heard in Paul's letter to the Ephesians how they were setting out on a path, the way of Jesus that was leading them to a higher level of spiritual life. Paul wrote that the Holy Spirit was enlightening their hearts, endowing them with wisdom, and giving them hope of inheriting with all the saints the revelation of God's glory. There's a song that I've recently found that comes from the New Zealand hymnal with lyrics that go like this. He came singing love, he lived singing love, and he died singing love. He arose in silence. For the love to go on, we must make it our song. You and I be the singers. The last definition of ascension I want to tell you about today means to succeed to like one inherits a position or responsibility that was previously held by another. Jesus passed along a commission to his followers to continue his work of healing and inclusion and unconditional love. By the nature of our baptism, we too have been adopted as Christ's own. We've inherited the call to serve in his name. At times, we may find ourselves staring up into the heavens, wondering what we're to do next. How do we begin, we may ask ourselves. Well, do you remember when you first learned how to drive? You may have had an experience similar to Christina. She was seated behind the wheel of the car for the first time. All those classes and manuals and videos had prepared her 
or so she thought. The instructor, sitting on the passenger seat, handed her the key. She put in the ignition, turned it, and the engine revved up. And she sat there, frozen with her hands, gripping the steering wheel tightly. And then her instructor's voice brought her back to the reality of the moment. Shift into drive, he commanded. After a lifetime of having someone prepare his meals for him, Thomas, now a widower, was adjusting to living alone. His children encouraged him to try cooking for himself. It'll be fun, they said. Ah, I'll destroy the kitchen, Thomas feared. He'd done all the shopping. He laid out all the ingredients and utensils and bowls he needed in order to try out that new recipe that he'd discovered on the Food Channel. Now the moment of truth was here. Break the first egg. In every human encounter, in every response to a call of ministry, there comes a moment when the planning is done and we each need to make a move. We have to respond. We have to shift into drive. Break the first egg. Quit looking up into the heavens and take that first small step along a new path. That moment came for the disciples on the Mount of Ascension. Those whom had been Jesus' followers were to become leaders. Jesus entrusted them, and now us, with his work of building up the kingdom of God. Angels are staring at us and wondering why are you standing here? There's so much to do. The next move is ours. Christ's work is entrusted to us. In order to see how any of us can bring the hope of the Easter Christ into the lives of others, we don't need to look very far. We only need to pay attention to and take the first small step toward responding to the needs of those around us. And we must remember, too, that we're not alone. Jesus has sent us the Holy Spirit, and we don't need to look too far to find that the Spirit is present in those very same spaces and hearts of the people whose lives touch ours, our friends, our families, the church, the human community, who need us, and who empower us. Let us pray. Living Christ, long ago faithful women proclaimed the good news of your resurrection and the world was forever changed. After your ascension, the disciples returned to Jerusalem with great joy and then out to the ends of the earth and your ministry lived on. Teach us to join with them so our witness may be as bold, our love as deep, and our faith as true. Amen.